I've been loyal to Gravity Forms for about as long as my WordPress career has existed, and I never thought that my head would be turned to any other form plugin until I tried WS Form. I had the pleasure of meeting Mark Westgard, the developer at WordCamp US last year. And as you Brits would say, he's just a top lad. He's a super, super nice guy. And it actually turns out that we had a mutual customer that was looking to do something with Pi Calendar and WS form. Me not having used it meant that I needed to take a look at it. And in the first few minutes, I was really blown away. So we're gonna take a look at some of those things. Now, let me start off by saying I am far from a power user of WS form. I probably know 10% about what this plugin can do. Whereas on the gravity form side, pretty much any challenge that you present to me that is regarding a form I can figure out. So I still have a long way to go with WS form, but a couple of these things just right out of the gate are really what got me excited. So I've just now installed WS form pro. There is a light version available in the WordPress plugin repository as well. Uh, but in this case, we're gonna go ahead and just click to start the little onboarding thing. So let's just say I'm a developer for building forms. Does your theme use a front end framework? Um, no, so we'll skip that. Nice little getting started video. And then what I'll do now is just go ahead and start off with a blank form because in my case, what I was trying to do was create an event from the front end using WS form that would enable you to show that event on your calendar using Pi Calendar. So we can see there's all these different options here and if we click them, it's gonna give us uh, specifically what those buttons do. Gonna be really helpful, but I'm gonna skip that so it stops blinking at me. So we'll start off by just simply adding in a text field. You can click or you can drag it in. This text field, maybe we would just call this like, um, you know, event name or something like that. The next thing you would want is the date time field. So we'll drag in the date time like this. And then we'll click on the little settings here to get to the field settings button. Then we can rename this something like event date and time. Actually, let's change it to start because that's how it works in Pi Calendar. We can go ahead and set this to required. And then for our type here, we want to do date and time. So for our date format, it's going to be a year, month, day like that. And then for our time, um, we'll go ahead and just do the 24 hour time format. Doesn't really matter. All of these other options will be totally sufficient. And then from here, we basically would just map a number of other Pi calendar fields directly in the um, kind of after form submission stage rather than here in the field specifically. So your form can be however complex you might want. But this is where the first thing that I really loved about WS form came into play. So let's go ahead and publish this. I'm gonna go ahead and open my homepage. Then here, I'm just gonna add the WS form block. We'll go ahead and select our form. I didn't name it, I called it new form, that's okay. We can go ahead and update this and view on the front end. And there is our form nice and basic. So what's so cool about this that I absolutely loved is I often build really complex forms and there's a button down here you can see that says populate and submit. What's so useful about this to me is that when you get larger forms, and especially those that have a variety of you know, uh, field input types, it could be date time fields, drop downs, anything like that, this populate and submit works for those. So what I could do is go ahead and hit populate and submit, and it's not gonna work properly, it's gonna error out here because I don't have SMTP set up. And I also forgot to hit a submit button, but you can see it goes ahead and inputs a date and time for me and some event name. So if you have a lot of maybe like follow-up actions and sequences and stuff happening, you can just get those running and not have to waste time filling in the form a bunch of different times. So that is super awesome. Now let's go back to our form real quick. And in this, we also want to add a submit button. So down here, we'll scroll down to buttons and then we'll just drop a submit in. And then that way the user could actually click the submit button. Then the other thing that I really, really loved about this is when we go ahead and create our actions. So all the standard ones that you would expect kind of just show up here, like save submission to the database, show a message to the user, send an email and so on. In our case, we'll go ahead and actually just delete send email because again, I don't have SMTP set up on this site, so it'll keep erroring out. But this actions panel is so awesome because in gravity form specifically, you have to switch back and forth between screens. So if you wanna create like a confirmation action or like a follow-up email, you have to go to a different screen. And if you're missing meta fields, you have to go back and refresh and then go back into where you just were and refresh again. It's really clunky and it's probably just a consequence of the way they built it in the past that you know kind of that legacy functionality has to remain all these years later whereas something like ws form has come along and thought that out much more cleanly and i really really like this screen now like most form plugins to be able to do an action where you're creating a post from the front end we actually need an additional add-on so i'm going to go ahead and install that 
So I went ahead and installed the WS Form Pro post management add-on, and this will allow us to create a post from the front end and also map custom fields to our Pi Calendar installation here. So what I'll do is go back to my form, and then what I can do now is go back to my Actions tab. We'll create a new one. This new action will be Create Event. This will be our Pi Calendar event. If I could spell, there we go. And then the action type is going to be Post Management. That's why I had to install that add-on. It's gonna ask you when should this action run. In our case, after form submitted is totally fine. And for our post type, because PyCalendar lets you add an event anywhere you want, you could do the standard WordPress posts, or it could be an event CPT if you happen to have that created on your site. You have all the familiar options here for what you wanna do with that post, whether they should be published or draft. Maybe you want to approve them before they're actually published on the site, so you could set them to draft. In my case, published is totally fine. Current user will be fine for the author. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually map our WS form field to a WordPress post field. So we're gonna click the plus sign here and we're gonna say that our event name is going to be the title of the post, which of course is required. Then for our custom meta keys, we actually wanna go down to this next section that says field meta map custom. And then what we wanna do here is say start date and time. This meta key starts with an underscore, it's pycal underscore start underscore date. And then there's one more that we need which is the meta key of underscore pycal underscore um, is event. And then the meta value is going to be one, which means true. There's a bunch of other meta fields available. If you go to docs.pycalendar.com, you can check those out. There's a lot of other functionality you can do, like creating your recurring events and all those kinds of things mapped directly from the front end of a post. So those are the only two things that we really need from a basic perspective to get this working. We just need a start date and time. You can optionally add an end time as well if your event happens to run between a predefined set of times. But now we can go ahead and save and close this. Then we'll publish our form again and let's refresh on the front end. So let's go ahead and give this event name something like, you know, Jonathan test. And we'll give this a date and time that actually isn't um, 15 years in the past. <laughs> Maybe that's something that I can configure, but it'd also be nice to maybe for this populate and submit functionality to be um, maybe a little bit more defined, especially in these time picker fields, because having your event be 15 years in the past is probably not very useful in this case. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just set this to a realistic time just a few days from now. So we'll go ahead and submit this. For whatever reason, it's still telling me my SMTP is not accepted. I wonder if I, oh, I didn't uh, delete that properly, I guess. Save and close, publish refresh, submit. Perfect. Okay, there we go. So our submission was successful. So now if we go take a look at this post in the back end, there's Jonathan test twice. I'll delete the old one and let's edit this most recent one. If we expand this calendar option, we have show on calendar turned on. That was the meta field that I added the number one after for that to be true. And then you can see our start data set to Friday, March 22nd at 12 noon, just exactly as we wanted. So now if we were to go back to our homepage, and we can, just before this, we can add the PyCalendar shortcode, update this page, view on the front end, and there's a couple of other posts I have here already on the site turned on, which is this hello world that recurs, but we can see our Jonathan test post right there exactly as we needed. So the reason why I went through this whole action screen is to show you how awesome it is that I can switch back and forth between my form fields and my actions screen here. So we can take a look at all of these other actions. There's so many different things, especially if you're a developer or somebody who's a bit more seasoned with code, you're probably going to love a lot of these things that are available straight to you here. Of course, there are tons of other add-ons for WS Form and integrations with lots of other providers out there, lots of other web services, and those will end up as these actions as well. The other crazy thing is this entire conditional logic screen, and I played with, around with this a little bit because I wanted to make an, an option disappear after a certain number of submissions, and although I couldn't figure it out, I think it's just user error on my part because look at how crazy powerful this section is. So there's a whole new condition we can just say, you know, test number one or something like that. And then we can say if, let's say, I don't know, start date and time equals or does not equal to or all these different options is clicked, is not validated. There's so many different things you can do here with this conditional logic. Then else statements like, there's nothing like this built into to Gravity Forms. Then outside of that conditional logic screen, the other big thing for me is how quickly I was able to get my head around this product and start using it in a meaningful way. It was a matter of minutes. I had never used WS Form at all, 
and I had an event post from the front end working in seriously five minutes. I'm not lying. I used it in five minutes, didn't have to go to the docs. Once I figured out that I needed that additional add-on, it just started working, which is just a testament to the quality and thoughtfulness of the product. Like I said, I'm still a WS form noob. There's so much more for me to learn. And what I'm gonna do next is try to build a super comprehensive form. One that I built for a real client site last year that was very difficult in Gravity Forms, but I suspect will probably still be challenging in WS form, but perhaps easier than it was in Gravity Forms. I covered WS form briefly in my newsletter that goes out every Wednesday morning. So if you're interested, please visit my website at jonathanjernigan.com slash newsletter and sign up there. You can find the link to that in the description below, along with the link to check out WS form. I'm curious what form plugin you use. So drop that in the comments before you leave. And otherwise I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.